My name is Jess Remington, and I have the pleasure this morning of introducing some of my peer and fellow Brower Youth Award winners, Madison and Rhiannon. It is my pleasure to have an opportunity to introduce these two leaders and activists. I don't want to give away their story, but I'll say this. Over five years ago, they found out about an environmental problem that was causing harm to a species. And then they worked day in and day out to fight corporate America to fix it. They believed it could be solved. They believed things could change. And they did it. Two citizens, two humans, against a whole lot of roadblocks, inspired a movement that made a measurable change. This is what Bioneers is about. This is why Bioneers is important. It exists to remind us that real change, another world even, is possible. Madison and Rhiannon represent the emergence of the age of nature that we are all here to celebrate, to plan, and to execute. I want to share three observations about them. One, Madison and Rhiannon happen to be young. They discovered their fire for this cause around age 10 or 11. They used the Girl Scouts as a platform from which to take action. And they've seen this cause through to high school. I don't mean to tokenize them by sharing this. They are not amazing because they are young. They are amazing because of the people they are and the actions they have taken. But their story is intertwined with what it means to be coming of age in this time of emergence. And that is an important story for them to tell. Two, when I think about them, I think about passion with grace. They possess such passion, and yet it is cradled by such eloquence and articulation and humility. They are electrified by the solutions they see and simultaneously nourished by a clarity of being able to speak their mind. And lastly, they aren't satisfied easily. Rhiannon and Madison have pushed and pushed for years, not accepting closed doors or even interim wins as the end of their campaign. They don't give up. And they represent the resilience that I think we all need to get better at cultivating. I'm so excited that you get to hear their story this morning. You're in for a treat. I'd like to welcome to the stage Madison and Rhiannon. Thank you so much. Raise your hand if you've ever eaten a Girl Scout cookie or were once a Girl Scout. 50 million American women have been involved in this organization, and today there are 2.3 million girls in the program. Now, how many of you would think that Girl Scout cookies contain an ingredient that results in rainforest deforestation, the endangerment of thousands of species, and contributes to human rights abuses? <laughs> I didn't until six years ago when we started to earn our Girl Scout Bronze Award. Inspired by our hero, Dr. Jane Goodall's selfless efforts to protect the chimpanzees, we decided to research another great ape, the endangered orangutan. We discovered that their habitat in Indonesia and Malaysia has been cleared, in fact, 40 million acres for palm oil plantations. One night, we came across the horrific images of orangutans who had fallen victim to the palm oil industry after entering these plantations in search of food. Both of us sat there with tears in our eyes as we realized the full gravity of the situation and the true hopelessness that this incredible species is facing. Believe it or not, palm oil is found in 50% of the products on grocery store shelves. Everything from candy bars to cosmetics and baked goods. When we realized this, we decided that we weren't going to eat anything with palm oil. We scoured our pantries, searched grocery aisles, and were shocked to find how common palm oil is in the products we eat every day. After earning our Girl Scout Bronze Award, it was the middle of Girl Scout cookie season. We were gearing up to sell the cookies that we had sold since childhood, and we flipped over a box, just out of habit, to see if they contained palm oil. When we realized that they did, it was so shocking for both of us. Part of the Girl Scout law includes to make the world a better place and to use resources wisely. So to us, using deforestation-free palm oil seemed like the only and the right thing to do. As 11-year-olds, we decided that it was going to be our mission to bring this issue to the attention of our Girl Scout organization. <laughs> Thank you. 
When we started this project, we believed that somehow we would find a way to accomplish our goal. And it has been this passion and dedication that has fueled our cause for the past six years. We started small in our local community, and since then our project has grown to an international platform. Yet it all started with a single petition, which our hero, Dr. Jane Goodall, later signed, and a letter writing drive. Our campaigns led to a short conference call with Girl Scout executives in 2008, which unfortunately did not lead anywhere. <laughs> but instead of being discouraged, we realized that we needed to turn up the volume on our message. <laughs> we partnered with a variety of environmental and social organizations to engage a wider national audience. Working with the Rainforest Action Network, we designed easily accessible online campaigns, including a petition on change.org that gained 70,000 signatures. Even the honorary president of Girl Scouts USA, First Lady Michelle Obama, was asked to weigh in her thoughts. By this point, we appeared on many national news outlets, from the Wall Street Journal to NPR to the CBS Early Show. Project Rings has now been placed on an international platform as the United Nations honored us as North American forest heroes for our efforts to promote the use of deforestation free palm oil. In May of 2011, after five years of campaigning, we finally um, were able to score a meeting with Girl Scout executives at their headquarters in New York City. And in September of that same year, they announced a new palm oil policy, which is a really exciting step in the, first, in the right direction. It's the first policy in the organization's 100-year history ever to have been driven directly by girls. But it doesn't do enough. It doesn't ensure that the palm oil being used in Girl Scout cookies is truly deforestation-free. Because the Girl Scouts aren't a normal food company, they're a nonprofit organization. We believe that they should set an example for the million of girl girls that are a member of their programs. But we are also working to have the largest impact possible within the greater palm oil industry. Last May, we met with representatives from Kellogg's, one of the baker of Girl Scout cookies, to address the palm oil usage across their entire product line. We are continuing our dialogue with them and are hopeful to see them announce some sort of deforestation-free policy in the near future. Although, <laughs> although we aren't experts in a particular field or science, we have a role to play in this movement. And that is, we need to make palm oil an everyday concern when customers visit the grocery store. As consumers, we need to evaluate the way we are exhausting our planet's resources, because if we don't consider how our purchasing decisions impact our local and global communities, it is easy to ignore the destruction that, is, that occurs. Most people would view our age as a disadvantage when trying to enact change within the Girl Scout community as well as the greater palm oil industry. But because we are youth, we have the luxury of imagining a vision that appears irrational, and we can dream in a way that is not limited by an adult's perspective. We took one of our biggest weaknesses, our age, and turned it into our biggest strength. There should be no limiting factor when it comes to changing the world. Help us live up to the Girl Scout law to make the world a better place by joining our movement for deforestation-free products. But before we end, we'd like to leave with a final few words from our hero, Dr. Jane Goodall. If you really want something and really work hard and take advantages of opportunities and never give up, you will find a way. Thank, Thank you. you.